together now. Oh, rain on me. Rain on me. Holy Ghost showers. Rain on me. Yesterday, yesterday's gone. But today I'm in need. Oh, Holy Ghost showers. And burn now, burn in me, oh, burn in me, Holy Ghost fire, oh, burn in me, oh, yesterday's gone, but today I'm in need, oh, Holy Ghost fire. Lord, come and rain on us, Lord. Hallelujah. Breathe on us tonight, Lord. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Yesterday's gone, Lord. Today we need Father. Hallelujah. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, with every hand raised, hallelujah. Blessed be your holy name. Oh, thank you, Lord. As well as Brother Amos, just to open up this meeting in a word of prayer, amen. If you've got a need this evening, hallelujah, you can signal it by the raising of your hand. Amen. Let's go ahead. Heavenly Father, mighty God, oh, Jesus, here we are, oh God, tonight, Lord. What a moment, what a time, oh God, in your presence, oh God. Lord, David said, I was glad when he said, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. Oh, there's joy, there's freedom, oh, there's liberty. The Spirit of God is here tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have set us free, oh God. Here we are, oh God, tonight, Lord Jesus, to come and celebrate the end of the year, oh God. Lord, to come and say, this is the year that the Lord has made, Lord. That we are entering into a new year again, oh God. Knowing that, Lord Jesus, you have everything figured out tonight, oh God. All is figured out even the next year, oh God. We're here to praise you, to worship you, to exalt you, to thank you, God. We are here, God, with that anticipation, oh God, tonight, Father. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father, that, oh God, we bring our hearts we bring our minds. Oh, Lord, we know that, oh, God, the Spirit of God will come and transform us tonight, oh, God. You will come and rewire us. You will come and change us. You will come and make us, oh, God. We are yours tonight, Father. Oh, there's no place we want to be, oh, God, but in your presence, oh, God. There's no place we want to celebrate, but, oh, God, with you, Lord Jesus. We thank you tonight, Lord. We pray, Father, that you will come around. Meet us again tonight, oh, God. Oh, Jesus, we come, Lord, and we want to let go of the pressure. Let go of last yesterday, oh God. Let go of whatever happened previous year, oh God. We are entering, Lord God. We have been renewed, God, tonight, oh God. We pray, Father, that the Spirit of God, oh, that has raised Jesus Christ from the dead, the Spirit of God will come along, God. will quicken us tonight, oh God. It will change us, oh God. We will leave this place never the same again, oh God. Lord Jesus, this is the best place to celebrate the Lord. This is the best place to celebrate the year, oh God. We pray, God, the Lord, whatever will take place tonight, oh God, may it be your will, oh God. May you come around, oh God, and refresh us. May you come around, oh God, and touch each and every heart tonight. May you come around, God, and speak to each and every heart tonight, oh God. 
May you come around, God, and meet our needs, O oh Lord. We thank you so much, Lord. Here's our pastor back, Lord, oh God. We see the fires on, oh God. All our prayers are answered everywhere, oh God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Nothing is in vain, Lord. We love you, Father. We see the results every hour. All is open, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Our brothers, our sisters, now we are gathering together, Lord, just to celebrate, just to worship, just to exalt your name, O oh God. We pray, Lord, Lord, just come, Lord. We love to be around your presence. We love to be on our knees. We love to talk to you, Lord. We love to worship you. We love to talk to you, Jehovah. We love you when your shadow is around us, Lord. We love your presence, Lord. Because, oh God, you never leave us the same, Lord Jesus. Just that shadow changes everything, oh God. Your grace, your mercy, your love, we appreciate you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Come and meet our musicians. Oh, meet the elders, oh God. All their those of duty, oh God. We pray that the Spirit of God will continue, Lord God. Just usher us over and over again, Lord. We love you, Lord. We are here for more. Where the eagles gathers, Lord. Where the carcass is there, the eagles they gather. We are here, oh God, because Lord, we are here. God, we thank you, Lord. He Hallelujah. I believe you can do better than that. Let's just give the Lord a warm welcome this evening. Hallelujah. Amen. We greet you in that wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's, it's nice to be in the house of the Lord this evening. You can just turn around and shake your neighbor's hand and welcome them into the house of the Lord. As we wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, how strong He Are the everlasting 
You do not and you won't grow weary. Oh, you were defender and you comfort. Oh, you left us up on wings. All together now, I keep you saints greetings in the precious name of Jesus Christ amen. amen and we're grateful to be back in the house of the Lord this evening amen, amen. just a little chorus amen how many is grateful for the grace of God upon your lives in 2019 amen. thank you for his grace and mercy amen it's only by his grace that we've made it thus far amen i 
standing here Father I'm in your presence in you oh preeminence I have my hand up raised behold Worship Him, hallelujah. Give Him praise, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We worship you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Just Thank worship you, in your own way. Oh, yes, Just Lord. Just give Him praise as we come to the last day, hours of 2019. Lord, I'm here for a purpose. I'm here to worship you. I'm here to seek your face. I'm here to receive my blessing. I'm here to receive my portion. So, Lord, I come tonight. Hallelujah. With a determination in my heart that God can meet with me tonight. Hallelujah. I don't care if you didn't receive your blessing this year, but I did tell you we can receive you. You can receive it right now. If you open your heart, young girl, young people don't look around. Zero in on Christ tonight. Oh, what a day, what a time we live in. Oh God, may you come and bless us. May you come and meet with us. May the Holy Spirit just pour out His presence tonight. Oh, hallelujah. So what we want to do tonight, we're not going to take too much time. Does the band play softly there? Uh, the Lord is so good. Thank you for your prayers. Ghana was a tremendous blessing. My God richly bless you. And I'm glad to be back home. But the Lord so organized it that uh, Luke told me uh, Pastor James Juma is here and he's in South Africa. So uh, I said, man, ask him, don't he want to take the midnight service? So we have a visiting minister tonight to come and take the meeting. Look how smart is God, knowing I'm tired and I'm a bit uh, weary. I was ready though, but uh, I thought, Lord, man, you, this is where you work. So we have with us tonight our Pastor James Juma and his wife is here. Uh, Sister Ruth, could you just wave there? Everyone see you? That's Sister Ruth, his wife, that has come with him tonight. So we want to give him most of the time for the preaching of the word. Do you agree? There's more specials, but we can maybe even do it afterwards. But we're here for the word. We're here to cross over into 2019, laying aside the negative things. And I'm going over with the positive things. And I want my blessing tonight. So God has sent us a visiting minister to come and preach. So that's supernatural to begin with already. So brother, let us be under expectation. And our pastor Juma, he was at Konga. He was at the meetings there. So uh, he's here to visit his son. And his son stays in uh, Centurion. And uh, he said this time they always come to visit him. But we'd like to welcome him to the pulpit. And uh, uh, he has his church in uh, Bulawaya. That's where his group is, and he's from there. So we'd like to welcome our pastor, James Juma. And we're going to sing that chorus is Waymaker. And I believe for 2020, he's still a waymaker. He's still a miracle worker. 
and tonight he can perform there is still light in your darkness and he's here turning lives around so sing it from your heart say lord my life turn around and we want to welcome all the visitors that has come i see one of elsa's friends there thank you for coming god bless you isn't that nice i saw her walking in and all the ones that has come tonight our brother stevie where's he god bless you the different ones we give you a great uh, welcome tonight so as we welcome our precious pastor just you open to the word tonight and say lord i'm here don't worry who's next to you i'm here for my portion lord i need something i can't go on the same way i need something to go over into the new year so lord speak to my heart as we sing that song he's he's here turning I hands up just close your eyes I raise your hand to him I worship you as we welcome our precious person to come and minister whatever God has laid upon his heart. You are here, moving in this place. I worship you. Just raise your hand to him now. Make love to him. Just forget who's next to you. Don't look around. Raise your eyes. Say, Lord, I'm here for my portion. I'm here for my blessing. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm, I'm going to reach out, Lord. I'm not leaving this place until you bless me. Oh, I worship you. Waymaker. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a now, we make a miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. in the darkness my God that is who you are oh hallelujah thank you Lord blessed be your holy name thank you Father hallelujah is that who he is you've got to know who he is in order to give him appropriate worship. Because God is a spirit, and therefore, they that worship him must worship him according to what he is. John 4, 24. God is a spirit. And so, if you want to worship him, you've got to worship him according to who he is. So you have to know who he is today. And then, Bring him appropriate worship. Yes, that woman there, uh, the Syrophoenician woman, yes, say to him, Son of David, yes. have mercy on me. Amen. He is Son of David. Yes, he is Son of God. Holy. He is Son of Man. Amen. So when she said to him, Son of David, have mercy on me, Amen. he did not even look at her. She kept on crying. She kept on pleading, imploring. But never at one, any one time did he tend to look at her. Until the disciples were the ones that came in on her behalf. And said, Lord, answer her. For she troubles us. Then he turned and answered the disciples, not her. He says, I was not sent to Gentiles. 
This is children's food. I cannot give it to dogs. And instead of her taking offense, she lashed onto what was said and took advantage of those words. And she said, Yeah, Lord. The moment she said, Lord, then he turned. Because she was not a Jew. He is only son of David to the Jews. So she was giving him the, the wrong title. Brother Bram says, you must know how to give him the, his right title. He says, that's why most of our prayers are not answered. Because we are knocking at the wrong door. We are using the wrong key. He says, we must know these things. No matter how, how hard she cried, how she looked so oh, pitiful and everything else, he could not answer her until, he, he, until she came to, her, to him according to the right title. The moment she said, Lord, then he turned because she was a Gentile. And to the Gentiles, he's not son of David. He is Lord. So we have to know who he is in our day in order to give him appropriate worship. <laughs> That's why this is the, the age where he is unveiled. Ever wondered why the first of all revelations is who he is? Every time he comes to Israel, he hear, O oh Israel, the Lord your God is one. He first of all unveils who he is. He says in, in Exodus chapter 6 and verse 3, I appealed unto Abraham, yes. Isaac, and Jacob yeah. as the almighty God. Amen. But by my name Jehovah yes. was I not known to them. Yes. So he appears by a name. Yes. I appeared unto Abraham, Isaac, Jacob by the name of almighty God. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. In every age, is a name that he gets, gets known by. The revelation of that name. But it will be revealed in the thunders, he said. <laughs> so God bless you, saints. So glad to be here uh, with you tonight. Uh, the last day of the year, 2019. Um, I believe God is a God of uh, God of his word yes. he, he doesn't make any errors no mistakes yes. he's perfect oh. I, I always call him the divine architect hey. he knows how to design things and how to develop things and how to bring them to pass yes, sir. and always right on time Amen. and so God had, had us to be here this time and, and the invitation came unexpectedly and, but believing that God always works in mysterious ways yes, his wonders to perform yes, you oblige Amen. and you pray and you ask that he would continue to reveal his purpose yes. for whatever he has called you to Amen. and so tonight we're glad to be here so glad for pastor uh, to give us the invitation to open his pulpit for us to be here Amen. and we want to say we really appreciate him appreciate you all yes, and we are trusting that God will do great and mighty things tonight yes, because not because I'm here, but because he's here. Hey. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I always say, you know, this great God who, who fills all time, space, and eternity, and then he says to, to David, what house can you build me? The, the whole heavens. I fill up the whole heavens. Eh? Heaven is my throne. And the earth, is that's my foot too. So what house can you build me? He says, where can I dwell? There's no space. There's nothing can contain me. Yes. But that same God takes his whole mind and puts it in the small Bible. Yes. That great infinite God yes. takes all his great mind and compresses it and fits it in the small Bible. Yes. So then that would mean when you read that Bible, you cannot read it the usual way. 
every comma, every full stop. You need a great magnifying glass yes, to go over a comma. Because it's the mind of this great infinite God. Pressed and compressed together. And put in a small book. So that, that book is not what it looks like. What you think it is. So when we approach this tonight, we want to approach you with that understanding tonight. We want to thank God who has given us his full word. One word broken. Took them out of Eden. And it will take nothing else. Nothing less than the full word. To bring us back in. That's why we have a messenger who brought the full word in our day. That's why we're grateful to him tonight. So, so I would like to invite you tonight to, to, the, to open with me to the, the Bible. Um, I believe pastor told you who I am. James Juma. Uh, Juma uh, from my, my Muslim uh, parents. Muslim background. So in case you didn't believe God saves Muslims. You've got one standing right in front of you tonight. <laughs> it's God's grace, right? God's wonderful grace. If you send, change St. Paul, you can change a Muslim too. No matter who you are, a man fully surrendered to God, if you can surrender yourself, you'll do great things for you. So as we come to the end of 2019, like Pastor was saying, whatever you were desiring, whatever you had need of, God is able to supply. God bless you, Brother Steve. I see Brother Steve there, our friend. God be with you. All of you, God bless you. God be with you. I might not know you by name, but guess what? I know you by your other name. I know you by your real name. <laughs> this is a name from, from this dimension, but there's another name from the other dimension. The real name, the real you and me, the real life. I'd like us to open to Revelation chapter 9 and chapter 10 tonight and, and, and read a number of verses there. Uh, or maybe let's just let's jump to Revelation chapter 11 and, and read chapter, verse 1 and verse 2. Then I'll come back to my text. So... Chapter 11, verse 1 and verse 2 says, and, and there was given me a reed like unto a road. And the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein. So he's asked to measure three things. He's measuring, first of all, the temple of God. Not any other temple, but the temple of God. Number two, he is asked to measure the altar, the place of worship. And number three, he is asked to, wash, to measure the worshiper. So the temple is measured. The altar is measured. The worshiper is also measured. Then verse 2 says, but the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot 42 months, three and a half years. But my focus is on the verse 1. Three things to be measured. The temple, the altar, the worshiper. So if the temple is measured, and the altar is measured, the worshiper has to be measured. Amen. Which means God is specific. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we come back to chapter 9 of Revelations. Then we end with chapter 10. Chapter 9 from verse 1 says, And the fifth angel sounded, And I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So it was a star, then it became a he, then it was given a key, a key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out, excuse me, something came out of there, out of the smoke, right? Yeah. He opened the bottomless pit. And out of that, when he opened, as soon as he opened the door, 
smoke came out as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by the reason of the smoke of the heat. So the sun was darkened, the air was darkened. Verse 4 says, okay, verse 3, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, like locusts would normally do, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. So these are special locusts, and they have a special design, and they have a special mission. Ordinary locusts would go for the green stuff. But these ones are not going for that. They're going for people. And the special pe type of people that they're going for, it's people that have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them, verse 5, was given that they should not kill those men, but that they should, should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he struck at the man. And in those days shall men seek death, but shall not find it. And shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Verse 7. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were, it were crowns like gold, and their faces were the faces of men. Special agents these. And their hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. Verse 9. And their breastplates as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And their tails like unto scorpions. And there were stings in their tails. And their power was to hurt men five months. So everything is determined. Everything is specific. Five months. Verse 11. And they had a king over them, which is the, which is the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon. And one war is passed, and behold, there come two more. So up to verse 11 is that angel with this special key to open the bottomless heat. And as soon as he opens, yes. something begins to happen. Those things were sealed in that pit. Took that angel to be thrown down, cast yes. down, then given a key, then he could open. We, we, let's go to chapter 10. Verse 1 again. We could read verse 1 to verse 11 because verse 10, verse 1 to verse 11 is an answer to chapter 9, verse 1 to verse 11. <laughs> and I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with the cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open. And he set his right foot upon the earth and his left foot on the earth and cried with a loud voice yes. as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Oh, and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, seal up those things with the seven thunders uttered and write them not. Yes, and the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, yes, that there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, now the prophet says, watch, not when he starts, but when he begins. <laughs> he makes a distinction between start and begin. He says not in the days of preparation, but rather when he begins. When he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he has declared to his servants, the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. 
And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. It shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Amen. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. Yeah. Amen. May the Lord add the blessing to the reading of the word. Shall we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Amen. Gracious and kind Heavenly Father, it's our joy and privilege once again to stand here, God, in the, in the midst of the assembly of the king's children, the great host, Father, that the redeemed of the Lord, our oh, Father, that are waiting for the body change and to meet you in the air one of these days, Father. And here we are, Father, at the junction time, the end of yet another year. Oh, God, we believe that you work with time, you work with numbers, you work with signs, you work with all these things, Lord. And there's a reason for us to be alive in this day. There's a reason why we, God kept us alive. Oh, God, many went yesterday. Many did not just wake up this morning. But here we are today, Father. Not because of our efforts or our intelligence, but because of your predestinated plan, Father. And so we want to answer to that call, answer to that confidence, why you put us here, Lord. And that's why we're coming to you this night, saying, Father, here we are. Speak to us one more time. Reveal to us your great mind. May we understand your purpose for our lives. So as we read the word tonight, we pray that, Lord, you would anoint the, the word, you would anoint, Father, the, the speaking of the word. You'd yeah. give us out of this, Father, context, something that would be of benefit to your children. Lord, you said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word Amen. that proceeds from your mouth. And you said, the word that you send out will not return to you void, but it will accomplish the purpose yeah. why it was sent. And Father, the, you, you've given us the scriptures here tonight. May you give, it, may you give us the understanding, the sense and the understanding yeah. tonight. And may our eyes be open to your wondrous truth. May the sick be healed tonight. May the needy, Father, find you yeah. as Jehovah Jireh tonight. Thank you, Father, for your grace and mercy. Thank you for the pastor. Thank you for the church. Thank you for their faith, Father. Come into church on a night like tonight to hear from you. May you bless them tonight. We ask all these things believing in the wonderful and lovely name of our dear Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Tain. You may take your seats. I'd like to take a title tonight. Uh, Go in many ways here, but just for tonight, I'd like to speak about we have the answer to the devil's question. Amen. We have the answer to the devil's question. Amen. The prophet speaks about that. He says in, in Christ is the mystery of the world revealed. He says now we have the answer to the devil's question. Amen. You know, the book of Hebrews chapter 4 says men were always fearing death. And because of that the devil took advantage and he was always giving them fear. He says he was, he was keeping them in bondage yeah. because all their life they were subject to fear. Fear of death. Now because you fear death, you, you tend to fear crossing the streets. You, you tend to fear the sangomas. You tend to fear the fear that drops at your house. You wonder who put this feather here? <laughs> How come this happened? <laughs> you see, this is the, because the, the, the people say because of fear, there were people now were in bondage. So Satan knew and he knows people fear death. And so he presses that advantage to make you be in subjection to him. But that's why Christ came and abolished Amen. death. Amen. Opened the way. Amen. Showed you there was nothing behind Amen. there. So that you don't fear death. So that you can turn around and speak to Satan like Paul did. Spoke to grave and spoke to death. So if death is not your enemy, if grave is not your fear, then who, who can you fear? You know, you know, the scripture says in Luke chapter 18, which is scripture for this day, there was, this, there was a, a city. Yes, sir. And then in that city, 
there was a judge. And that judge feared not God, nor respected man. But in that same city was a widow. We had a case, a problem. And no one else could help her but that man. Who neither feared God, nor respected man. He didn't worry about whoever. He didn't worry about the politicians. He didn't worry about whoever. He didn't care about them. They meant nothing to him. So if you thought you could go and intimidate him with big brother, he didn't fear people. If you thought you could intimidate him, I'll pray for you, I'll do this, he didn't fear God. But that's the man that is the key to this widow's problem. When you talk about a widow, you talk about somebody that's at a disadvantage. But God puts those two together. And he says that, that woman now says, look, I have no option. But go and face him. There's no other channel, there's yes. no other way but for me to go and, and face him. Yes, sir. Amen. But you know the type of person he is? Yes, I know. That he doesn't fear God, doesn't respect man? Yes, I know. Yeah. But where, can I, where else can I go? Yes. I have to go and face him. Yes. How do you know he's going to answer you? Well, I don't know. But I know he's going to answer you. Yes. But the Bible ends with this. It says she went there and she kept on coming. And she was so perseverant until that man said in his heart, though I don't fear God, no reverence or respect man, but because of this woman. This was a special type of woman. She did what men could not do. She did what people could not do. Yet she had nothing. She says, I will rise and do whatever she wants done. She went right into the enemy's camp. And got the victory right in the enemy's camp. So we are saying today is the last day of 2019. You are identified with that woman. Because the scripture, the, the chapter ends with this. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith. What type of faith is he talking about? It's a faith that knows, that takes no for an answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a faith that doesn't look at the impossibilities. Yes, sir. I hope you're getting this, saints. Yes, sir. That chapter 18 of Luke ends with this scripture, with yes. this verse. Nevertheless, he says, hear what the unjust judge said. But nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith. And then, in, in, in this book, he says, if you are following in that line, he reads that scripture, if you are following in that line, he says, I want to ask, and I, I want to paraphrase it, in other words, when he comes, will Malachi 4 be fulfilled at this time? So, the prophet of this age now connects Chapter 18 to Malachi 4. Glory. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith yes. upon the earth. So he's linking this woman yes. to the bride of this age. Yes. That the faith she must have is an unstoppable faith. It's a faith that cannot be intimidated. A faith that will, will possess any gate of the enemy. This is the faith that he ascribes to this day. That faith doesn't look at who is driving the economy, who is the president, who is the finance minister, who is, who, who is what? It doesn't look at it. Because when you start operating in that faith, you are beyond all that. Now, faith is not hope. Faith is not a wish. There's a real faith. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the words. You better make sure what you're hearing is the word. Because that's supposed to produce faith. And in this age, it's not just faith, but it's an, 
A faith that I'm failing. And that faith is not limited to brothers only. Not limited to pastors and deacons only. That faith is all for all the seed of Abraham. Yes, sir. That faith was given to all the seed of Abraham. Anyone who believes this message, anyone who believes it with all his heart, that faith comes to them. They possess that faith. Faith of this hour, like the prophet says in the um, first page of uh, Spiritual Food in Jew Season, he says that there's that's faith for the rapture. It's rapture in faith. Eh? Yes, sir. Yeah, rapture in faith is a, one that changes the molecules, yeah. cha- changes the body. Yeah. What doctors can't do, yeah. that faith does. Yeah. Yeah. Doctors can't change body. Yeah. But this faith goes into creation mode. We are talking about a, a body being created, yeah. a body being made. Yeah. The doctors can stitch up, yeah. but they can create. Yeah. But yet, this faith can create. Yeah. That's why the, the pioneer of it, the prophet of this hour, was told, You're hunting. You're looking for squirrels, yeah. and there's none. How many do you need? Yeah. Speak, and there will be. The spoken word is back. Amen. So when you look at chapter 18, there was a city. There was a, 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 a judge. And then there was a woman in the same city. And she had a problem that only the judge could solve. But he was not the type of doing that. He didn't care about God. He didn't care about men. He didn't respect authority. He would not be moved by anything, no matter how hard she cried. And that was his record. And that's why when he was answering, he said, he said in his heart, though I don't fear God. Yeah. It was well known and he knew it himself. Yeah. Number two, though I don't respect man. Yeah. That's the type of the devil. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 But f- because of this woman, yeah. because of this church, yeah. because of these believers here, yeah. I have to change my attitude. Yeah. I have to change my philosophy. I have to change my legislation. We are living in a time where believers can believe and government legislation can be changed because of believers. You believe that tonight? Things can be changed just for you. And that tomorrow they know they made a mistake and change it back again. But you have got what you wanted. That's, that's where we are living, saints. We have the answer to the devil's question. When the devil came in chapter 9 of Revelation, he was in heaven. He was the next thing highest to God. He was, next, he was the highest being that is just next to God. But then he was, because of pride, uh, you, uh, we don't have time for that, uh, Isaiah 14. Ezekiel 28, he he was thrown right down. Now, the scripture says in Revelation chapter 9, he says he was cast down. Did he say so? He was cast down. So, he says, I saw a star fall from heaven. He didn't come down from heaven. He fell. But chapter 10, another angel. This one does not fall from heaven. This one comes from heaven. One falls, but one comes. This one is cast down, but this one comes down on his own free will. Chapter 9 is cast down from heaven. Chapter 10, he comes down from heaven. So there's a difference in how they come down. But they're all coming down. This one is cast down. He falls. from He has no control over where he falls. Because he falls. He's cast out. But this one comes down. And he, this one is a book in his hands. Not just a book, an open book. <laughs> 
They're all coming down. Oh, my. Glory. You remember the scripture six about those angels that were, that were, that left, that kept not their first estate? Fallen angels. Fallen angels. But there's one that's not fallen. There's all types of angels. This, this prophet says there's, there's thousands of them right in this room here. Unseen to the natural eye, there are, there are multitudes and multitudes right here. He says you don't see them with your eye, but you can feel them with that thing that he says with that. He says it's called the new birth. It's a, it's a baby in the mother's womb. He, he hears noises outside, but he doesn't know what's on the outside because he's living in a different world. His world does not have color. He doesn't know what red is, what white is. He doesn't know anything. He doesn't know about heights and everything else. It's a small world. And he believes this is the only world he knows. Until the day he bo is born. And all of a sudden, he sees a totally different world. There's no color. There's no people moving. All sorts of things. He says, that's the same way. You and me are operating right now. We believe this is the only world we know. So when you talk about angels, it's like something that's way off and far off and unbelievable. But yet it's a real world. And it's right here. He says, when a man receives the baptism of the Holy Spirit, quickly he becomes a twofold being. Quickly. One on earth to die, one in heaven to live forever. He says, and the angels of God visit him. Angels visit you. Angels stay with you. John 1 51. Oh, you believe because I told you that when you were under the tree, I saw you? Oh, okay. What about when you shall see greater things than this? Heaven will open. And then there'll be a ladder up here. Then the angels will be ascending and descending. You see, that was greater than discernment. There's a promise of yes. greater things after discernment. Yes, he says, you, you believe because I told you where you were. Yes. That's the second pool. That's discernment. He yes. says, but what about when I tell you the bigger thing, greater things? Yes. So like what? He says, like heaven opening yes. and angels ascending and descending. Like they did in Genesis 28 with Jacob. Yes. When he just decided, I'm tired. Let me just find a place to sleep. And then he found the place. And then he could say, well, I need some, something to lay my head on. And he says that there was a, a pillar there. So he grabbed it and he laid on it. He took the pillar and made it in the pillow. And as soon as he had his head touched the pillow, which was a pillar, heaven opened. And he saw a step ladder. On the top, it was hooked up to God. At the bottom, it was hooked up to here. He says that was hooked into Christ. And then along the, the ladder there, he saw angels ascending and descending. Amen. And the prophet says, they're still doing the same thing tonight. He oh. says, they are taking your prayers up there and they're bringing your answers down. You don't believe it? Who brought Daniel his answer? The angel did. The angel brought his answer. So when God is sending your answer, he doesn't use people, he uses angels. He can use even the angel in the pulpit. He can use the angel in the pulpit to give you an answer out here. So it's a fall, fallen star, falling down to perdition, opens the, the, the bottomless pit. But the other angel is coming down for redemption. Yes. Chapter 9, he's falling down to perdition. Chapter 10, he's coming down for redemption. Amen. They're coming from the same world. Yes. Yes. But this one has lost his title now. Yes. Yes. So he's coming down and he has a domain. And he's, got, he's given a key. It's only him that is that key. He has jurisdiction over that place. 
And so he takes the key and he opens that dimension of the bottomless pit. And when he opens it, his subjects start coming out. He says, those locusts are the king over them. Gives him his name, even in the Hebrew tongue and the Greek tongue. He's well known. He's got name. He has authority over devils. So he opens up the, the, that dimension and out comes his subjects. And that smoke comes like this. this describe, the Bible describes the type of smoke that comes out. It darkens the, the, the sun. It pollutes the air. Now when the sun is darkened and the air is darkened, you're looking at nuclear holocaust, nuclear winter. We don't have time for that today. And then when you, just, when you darken those, then life is gone. If it darkens the air, then you can't breathe. It's contaminated. That's why the prophet said the air is full of demons accusing you before the Father. The whole air around you, the whole atmosphere is filled with devils. Now that's what the prophet in this age came to reveal. And when you look at the Feast of Trumpets, he's telling about those supernatural devils, supernatural charges. He says you can't see them with your naked eye, but you can see what damage they are doing. When you go around elders and you see people drinking, when you see people smoking, when you see people committing adultery and everything else, you can identify which angel is causing this here. Your enemy is not your neighbor. Your enemy is not your son. Your enemy is not anyone else. It's these, these people here. At this juncture, let me read a quotation before I get carried away. Let's, brother, let me have the quotation of John Sproul. I, I want to, uh, to just to express something here, saints. We have the answer to the devil's question. Hey. Now, the devil knows all about God. He knows all about worship. So he cannot be defeated by a lie. He cannot be defeated by somebody that presupposes or maybe he thinks he is in the faith or, or he thinks it means this. You're too small for him. That's why we read Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. Everything is, uh, is measured. There's a way you and me have to ad- come and identify ourselves to him. That will make him move. Amen. That's why those people came to him and said, Sudden Puma, come out of this person. And he says, wait a minute now. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let, let's do the preliminaries. Let's, let, let, let's do the intros. The introductions first. You don't just come up here and ask me to move. Who are you? Identify yourself. Where are you coming from? Do you know who brought me here? Do you know why I'm here? And why can you just come and say, get out? Who are you? By what authority do you want me to get out of here? So, saints, you have to have to know by what authority you want certain things done. The, the devil is not mild, you know. The devil is not foolish. The devil is not stupid. He's the, most, he's the author of science. He's the author of technology. You're getting surprised at the speed of things, yeah? He's the author of it. You think you can, you can defeat him by a lie? Or by crying? Or by feeling pitiful? Not that one. The devil, oh, one more thing. The devil is, doesn't have any feelings for you. Just for you to know. The devil doesn't have any good feelings for you. He doesn't even love you. He even like you. He doesn't care about you. He has no ounce of pity. Once you fall into his hands, you're gone. Don't ever fall for his lies. That's why he'll use you, little girl, he'll use you. And then when you're finished, you go to the devil's hell. He never says sorry. So, brothers, 
Those brothers who don't say sorry to their wives. Who can't say sorry? Okay, that's fine. Let's go to this guy. Right. He says, John Sproul, a friend of mine, taking his wife, took a trip over to La Salle, Lorraine, France, and the guide was taking them through a certain garden, showed them a statue of the Lord Jesus. I want you to catch that. The statue of the Lord. It's not Buddha. The statue of the Lord Jesus. And Brother Sproul said he was looking at that statue. He said, what did the sculptor have in his mind? Why? I don't see any sufferings of Christ. I don't see nothing. Just looks like the statue. What does that mean? And the guy said to, Ms. Sproul, to him, Mrs. Sproul, you are perhaps criticizing that statue. He said, yes, I am. He said, I don't know what the sculptor had in mind. He said, the thing of it, oh, that's the guy now. He said, the thing of it is, you have to know what the sculptor had in before you can see what he was trying to do. So you've got to trace it way back to where its origin. Why certain things were done the way they were done. That's why at times you come in and it, some people are trying to fight and you just come in and intervene. And you say, no, you shouldn't do this, this one. The, at times you get beaten. Because you don't know how the thing started. That's why let's go back to the beginning. Amen. Right, he says, he says, the thing of it, you have to know what the sculptor had in his mind before you can see what he's trying to do. He said, now come down here. And he went down to the foot of the cross. And there was a pet there. He said, kneel down. He said, now look up. And Ms. Brother, Ms. Brother thought his heart would break. There was, there was every agony that Jesus went through on the cross. All featured. He said, you see, sir, the statue was made to get down and look up to. And not stand off and look over it. Now, that lays... Wait, you have to know that. That explains a lot of things here. Okay, you want to get married, young person? Do you understand why? How? Do you understand the author, what he had in his mind when he instituted marriage? You can go in a lo lo lot of ways, a lot of avenues there. Yes. It's the same statue. It's the Lord yes. Jesus. Yes. It's the same message of the hour. Yes. But it depends how you approach it. Yes. The same ministry. Yes. Paul says some preach Christ out of contention. Some because of this. The approach. It's all because of the angle. He said the statue was not made for you to stand and look over at. That's in another quotation. It was not made for you to stand here and look over at. But when the man designed it and the man wrote it down, it made in such a way that the only time you're ever going to see all the features is when you kneel and look up. Amen. Not when you stand and look at. And this message, brother and sister, will not mean much until you know what this captor had in his mind. Why did he bring a message? Why did he bring the messenger? And how are you supposed to approach it? 1963, the pillow fire came down. The angels came down. And the pictures were taken. And people rejoiced and many sermons were preached. It was only 1965 when God said to the prophet, they are looking at it from the wrong angle. You turn the picture to the right. From 63, they are preaching the message. They are looking at the pillow fire. They are identified with it. But he comes in 65 and says, guess what? They are looking at it from the wrong angle. Turn the picture to the right. Amen. And when he did, he says, there was our Lord up there. That's our Lord up there. Amen. So when you look at this message, saints, this message is supposed to be God's best. Yes. Right? This is this, the last message to the Gentiles. Amen. And God works with this principle. In one quotation, he says, if this message is given to you, Outside, outside of the continuity of the Bible. Outside of the continuity of the Bible. 
That's not God talking to you. He said, this message has to come in continuity. It has to show you from the beginning, how it's come down to here, and how it's going to end. It cannot just be piecemeal. No. This is a message. It has an intro. It has the body. It has the conclusion. Maybe you can just type for me. I don't know who's doing, who's there, but doing the quotations. Just outside of the continuity. Then you can see it. Outside of the continuity. So you are beginning to understand here. The 63 prophet preaches Christ is the mystery of God revealed. And he begins to say, you know what? He says in this message today, yes. it will answer yeah. why I have done what I've done. Yeah. Why I have said what I've said. Yeah. All the days of the tabernacle. He says this is why. Then he reads the scripture. Colossians 3. He says, in this message this morning, in Christ is the mystery, yes. you are going to understand why I have done what I have done. Yes. Why I have said what I have said all the days of the tabernacle. And then he says, this is why. Then he reads the scripture. Christ is the mystery. Amen. And then he says, the, you know, way back before time, hey. God had something that he had in the back part of his mind. Yes. 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 You're going back there. You cannot understand the statue unless you know what was in the mind of the sculptor. You cannot understand this message by just reading it and like just a, academic, but you have to go back into the mind of the great Elohim. Because he, we've shown in Revelation chapter 1, he doesn't just do things for doing them. Don't say, he doesn't just gather people for gathering people. No, he, he has a purpose and a plan that he's working with. And that plan is unfailing. And that plan cannot be substituted by anything else and anything else. Everything else. It's specific. It's specified. It's got dimensions. That's why if you go to, the, to Ark, Noah's Ark, it's got dimensions. It's got the materials. Everything is specific. Now, if you are talking about seven ages, why not, why not 12? It's seven. And so God had a choice of bringing you and me up in the first one. And why didn't you and me come up in the first age and have Paul for our messenger? But mercy said no. God said not these. Second age, he says not these. Third age, he says not these. Fourth age, not these. Fifth age, sixth age, but the seventh one. They are reserved for the very last age. Hallelujah. You are not here by coincidence. You are not here because your parents decided to bring you up. No, sir. The almighty God, the great creator, determined that only this age would be your age. There's no mistake about it. You had to be here now. You were made that way for a reason. Now, listen to this. The prophet, your prophet as well. He, he, he said, when I go shooting, go hunting, and hunting for, uh, for, for, for squirrels, he says, I have to shoot it right in the eye. Or I'm not satisfied. He says, your woods, banks, and my cars in there, he says, they, can, they will be having a good time shooting them wherever they shoot them, as long as it's meat, nyama. He says, then I... When they are doing that, having a good time, I have to go to the side of the hill or something or, and start crying. Yeah. Say, Lord, why did you make me such a wimp? Uh, I cannot be satisfied until and on, and only until, or until I hit it right in the eye. Yeah, as small as a squirrel is. Yeah. And, he, and then him using a wrong rifle. Oh. 
I don't have time to explain those things, but you can read it. He says, I was, reading the, I was using a wrong rifle for, for that. And I was driving a tech. It was hitting bull's eye at 50 yards. He says, but that the time I be, it began to miss. And I took that rifle back to the company. And I said, your rifle is it's not perfect. Something is wrong. He said, they looked at it, they looked at it, and they sent the lab and everything else. They said, this is perfect. He said, then they wrote me a dear brother Branham letter. He said, this is fine. Even a new rifle is allowed a little leeway. He says, and you are, in fact, you are using for the wrong purpose. He says, no, but I've used it before, and I've hit the squirrel right in the eye. And his wife said, brother Branham, are you, are you saying you are better than them, the owners? He says, no, but I've used it, honey. He says, then God spoke to him. He says, I made you that way for a reason. If the prophet was made that way for a reason, you are made the way you are made for a reason. So, what does this all do to us? What does this all do to us? It makes us come up with an unshakable faith. We know the devil's limitations. We know that whatever he does is governed. We know he cannot create. We know he cannot do anything except what he's limited to. Because the whole thing is measured. The water cannot behave and do anyhow. The seas are controlled. The moon is put there for, for, to control the water. The tides on, on, the, on, the, on the coast. But guess what? Even your borehole inland is also controlled by the moon. The fisherman knows that if the moon is in a certain place, we can't get fish. Because it was put there to control the waters. I mean, this is just showing the type of God you're dealing with. He does not, in one place he says, he does not deal haphazardly. Yes. No. He says, God doesn't deal with things haphazardly. He never just thought maybe, oh, I'll go and die there and then uh, people feel p- 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 pity for me and then they'll repent. And that's not how he does it. That's why he says, he foreknew. And then he foreordained. Then he predestinated. Okay, that's the way the gospel is today. It can only be seen in the way that God presents it to you. And look at the second one. And if it's presented to you outside of the continuity of the Bible, the gospel presented outside of the continuity of the Bible, then, what does it say there? It's not God telling you that. Everything must be Agree with the continuity. The, any message that's coming now cannot take us, must not take us back there. It must, we must go with the continuity. The man who was forgiven by the king, let me quickly throw this in. He, had, he was owing the king. The king said, my money. And the guy said, no, pleaded poverty. Things are hard. You know, I was laid off. Whatever it was. And the king forgave him. I mean, know that one. Amen. But as soon as he was let go, what happened? He met somebody else that was owing him. Is that so? And they say, the guy also brought up excuses. Eh? And did this guy understand? No, he says, no way, it's not my money. No way, never. You are sleeping in there. And as soon as anything, the guy was locked up. But as sure as anything also, the word got back to the king. That the same guy who was here, who pleaded in poverty, met somebody there. Same, similar case. But he failed to do what you did. In other words, he broke the continuity. God creates. Then what does he do? He, he takes a break. He gives, hands over to his son. He takes the creation to his son. He says, name the animals that I created. I created. You give them the names. You continue what I started. And the moment we break that, we break the continuity. Then that guy was put in prison. So if this gospel is presented to you outside of the continuity of the Bible, that's not God talking to you that. Because God's word is consistent. It starts from somewhere, it's going somewhere. That's why it says when the seals are open, the sixth seal, you're able to identify the spirit where it started from. 
how it's operating now and where it's going to end. In other words, when the seals are opened, you're able to see the whole book open. In other words, you're able to identify where things started from in Genesis. You're able to see, you're able to see Noah receiving a message of grace, believing it, and then building the ark. And then people getting saved and sealed in the ark, sealed until the day of redemption. The only time those people got out of the ark was onto a new world. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. So you get the trumpets there, you get the seals there, you get everything there in Genesis. And the prophet says there's two books that Satan has, it's Genesis and Revelation, because they show his origin, and that one shows his destiny. And so if you and me know the way the prophet spoke and taught the word, we know how to trace it from Genesis to Revelation, that the same angel, when he was thrown down, he went into, into the Garden of Eden. Opened that dimension. Then started lying through his teeth. Yeah, as God said. And he lied such a way because he'd come from heaven. He knew how to deal with men. He lied until the church fell for it. And Eve, the next statement she's saying is, when the woman saw that the tree was things that she's never seen before. This is the first time she's, we get that expression. When the woman saw that, the tree was good for it to eat. To make one wise. He had preached in such a way that the eyes got open. But here on the other side, the Holy Ghost, when he comes to us, when he preaches to us, our eyes get open. Amen. So he starts then on the humankind, on human race, to destroy it. From when the time he fell, he opened that gate, that dimension there, and those demons started coming out. If you've spoken about uh, perfect faith but perfect weakness, he says the lead of hell is open. And what are these demons are streaming out? It says anointing people, anointing pulpits, anointing everything else. It says in, in Peace of Trumpets, it says you don't see them with your naked eye, but you see what damage they are doing. The angels also are here. Right from birth. Your angel, the, the children's angels, your angels. And when they come, what do they do? Even Peter, when he was in prison. It was an angel that woke him up. Yeah. Says, wake up. Woke up. Says, let's go. Chains fell. Doors open. And he's about to go out. Angel says, stop. Put on your clothes. The angel said, put on your clothes. You're not getting out of here naked. And you say, you claim you've seen an angel. <laughs> I'm coming from heaven. We don't dress that way. <laughs> and then the angel takes him out. And, and then when the angel saw that he was now in familiar territory, that's when he disappeared. Yes. Not before. No. As long as he was in unfamiliar territory, the angel went with him. Amen. Until he got to a place where he knew if I leave him here, he'll find his way. Amen. Those angels are with you. Yes. Those angels guide you. <laughs> so I want, to, I want to wrap it up uh, just to, just to sh 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 just show a few things here, saints. This, this is the whole fight that's there. That angel of chapter 9 yes. and that angel of chapter 10. Yes. Is, the angel of chapter 10 is bringing the answer to the angel of chapter 9. Yes, sir. When demons are coming out here, yes. God is come bringing out to us yes. the answer to that. Yes. So for your challenge, for your problem, whatever yes. problem you are going yes. through, God has brought the answer for you. There is no problem that God will not solve. Impossible. There is no situation that the word of God will not address. Otherwise, God is a God of confusion and frustration. And the prophet says that God is not the author of frustration. A quotation in church age book, he says you are the reason for his very existence. Jesus. You are the reason for his very existence. I'm not making that up. That's a quotation. You, with your weaknesses, 
with your limitations, with your problems. You are the very reason for his existence. There is nothing impossible with him. There is no disease he cannot heal. There is no condition he cannot address. I was preaching one night and then the ESCOM decided to switch us off that night. So I just continued and I said, let's, 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 let's pray. And I said, whatever, whatever condition you have there, just, just lay hands on yourself. Then. Yeah. And they did. And then when one uh, old man got home, he was about to change into his pajamas. And then he can't find this lamp that was been on his leg for the past 17 years. He had a lamp on his leg here for the past 17 years, on his thigh. And then he can't find it. So he, 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 he asks his wife, they look for it, they can't find it, they, sh they shake the pajamas, they can't find it. Yeah. It's gone. Okay? Now, he, he, here's what I'm trying to say. I'm just trying to show you something. This other man, I just preached in Durban once, and then we went to the hospital with, and saw one sister who had a spinal problem. The doctors had given up. So we prayed for her that day. We, we, we used this quotation, but the Bram says, Sister, I see you've been to the doctor. And I see he's told you you've got cancer and you're dying. He says, I see you believe that. I say, but I want you to do something for me, sister. Yeah. I want you to start thinking that you are not going to die. Yeah. That you're going to be here to stay. Yeah. And then he says, he turns around, he says, somebody thinks this is mind over matter. Yeah. It's not. This is Bible. Yeah. But the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, yeah. so is he. So, and then one place he says I want you to look at yourself you are sick you are this but I want you to see yourself as a well person yes. he says then I want you to move from here into that yeah. mm -hmm. so we pray for the sister that was on the Sunday afternoon after church Thursday I believe they said she was out shopping oh right. now I, I went back to Blue Area preached for one pastor there and then when I was closing the service I saw this woman come up with this man holding his hand and then he knelt down I said everybody bow your head Let's see what the story is. She says he's blind. Okay, what's the story? Then they told me, I said, you, uh, then I, we, we, we pray for that woman, man. Uh, two weeks later, he's sitting in his house, and all of a sudden his eyes pop up. So then he goes, okay, what had happened was this. He, he used to see before. So he made, some, made up with some tosses there. They hit him real bad. They took glass, and then put it in his eyes here. So they broke the arteries and everything, and the doctor said they can't do anything for him. So that was the end of his eyes. But God came back. Amen. Stitch all that together. Amen. Now, so what, what I'm trying to tell you is, this is the end of 2019. Amen. I'm just trying to show you the different things. Yeah? We have another sister who's heavy set. She loves to dance for the Lord. But all of a sudden she can't dance now because it's painful. Her feet are painful. Yeah. Going to the doctor, they say, no, there's uh, this thing, there's a bone growing here mm. under the heel. But guess what? She was just prayed for one Easter time, I think. And that was the end of the story. So we use that for another old woman now who says, me, I don't need anything. I have family in South Africa. My children went to South Africa. And, but they've never come back years ago. They went 10 years or so ago. All I want is for them to remember they have a mother. That's all I want. So we said, this is a small thing, sister. You know, one time there was this other woman whose husband ran away from her. We said, bring his shirt. We prayed for it that same afternoon. Four o'clock, the guy robbed up at home. <laughs> and then when he came, he had a shower. And guess what he asked for? That shirt. So, so we said, if that could be done for her, you're crazy. So, so we, we're sitting in the grass. We're sitting outside in the grass. Eh? We're sitting outside in the grass. So we said to another brother, let's come pray for this. He says, are you brothers? You get on, man. Me, I'm going to preach. So it's just Easter time, so we sit there with the old woman. So we pray for her. And, that was, and then two days later, she's on the Johannesburg Road, Joan, Bide Bridge, uh, Blairway Road. So the, she gets, somebody calls her and says, uh, she's called to the bus stop. On the way there, she meets up with her son. She had just alighted from this taxi from here. And she's bringing all these things. She fainted. So I'm just trying to pick up a few things here. Um, cancer cases and stuff. What I'm trying to show you is this. That this message is everything that you need this message has everything that you need nothing is impossible with the God that you save if he can do it for them he can do it for you too
You have the answer to the devil's question. Hallelujah. The prophet says, he says, it's not that there's nothing impossible with God. No, it's, there's nothing impossible with you. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Earth has no problem that heaven cannot solve. You believe that tonight? God bless you as the pastor comes up. Hallelujah. And the same God is here tonight. He's right here tonight. He, he, you want to go into 2020? You want to go on a new page? He's able to do it for you tonight. Hallelujah. He's here as the enforcer. One place, this woman who believed Elijah, and Elijah told her to go for seven years. And then she went in the town of drought, time of drought. And then after seven years, she came back. And as soon as she came back, she said, oh, everything has been taken. Her land has been taken. Oh, everything has been taken. And so what does she do? She says, I must go to the king again. Yeah. As she comes to the king, God has made sure that she gets an audience. How? He just put in the heart, in the, in the heart of the king the desire to find out about the ministry of Elisha. Is it? And then he calls Gehazi. Is it true that Elisha raised the dead body to life? He says, yeah, he did. And then guess what, king? There is, the, there is the boy and there is the mother. God made it so seamless. After seven years, because she had obeyed the word of the prophet, God made it so seamless, she had an interview with the king. And he says, yeah, that's my son. That's Elijah. He says, but you know what I'm here for, king? My land has been taken. Everything I had has been taken. He says, and then the king appointed an officer. To make sure she gets everything, yeah. including the fruits of the trees of the orchard. Amen. So, the, the fruit trees for the past seven years, what they yielded. I want to tell you about the mulberries. Take about the peaches. They had to be found and restored. And to make sure it was done, God appointed, the king appointed a compliance officer. To make sure everything that was lost in the seven years is restored. And whatever you have lost by believing this message, God as the Holy Ghost, the compliance officer, to make sure it's done. If you can believe it, you can have it. God bless you. I'm sure we can do better than that. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Salute the Lord for the way you use our precious Pastor James. My, it felt like he could just go on. Don't you feel that like that? My, it's a, bit, it's a midnight service. But he said so much and so beautiful. And I think it's enough that we can see where we are going. Amen. You believe that? And uh, I just want to maybe, you maybe see it quickly. We still have about a few minutes. Uh, I like what he said. This message is everything. You believe that? Yeah. Everything we need is in this message. That's why we preach this message. That's why we enforce it. That's why we get the young people read the spoken word. Why? Everything you need is in there. And uh, I just used this in, uh, in Ghana. Uh, Pastor James, this was so beautiful. And the brother's inspiration was pulling God out of history. And pulling him into present tense. And that's the message Brother Brian preached. So I was showing now that uh, Hannah who was an old lady and she couldn't have a baby. But she could look back to history and see. But Sarah was an old woman. And she had a baby. Why can't God give me a baby? So she looked right back. And said, but God, you gave that old woman a baby. I'm an old woman. And she came into the temple, prayed day and night until the priest thought she's drunk. But one day, and he said, but what was the purpose? He said, if you give me that child, I'm going to give it back to you. So there was a condition. Give me the child. But when you answer my prayer, I'm giving it back to you. Whatever you ask, there must be a purpose. Why are you asking for healing? So I can give my life back to you. 
to serve you better. Why, why, why do you want to be uh, filled with the Holy Ghost? Why? So that I know the Holy Ghost can then take me and lead me. And then God gave her the baby. And Brahman says, you know what? It wasn't only a child. He gave her a prophet. Yay. So when you ask, God will give you double, man. And I got a quote here. He says, man, where he discerned a woman. He says, she, you're 50 years old. He says, but don't give up. You're going to have a baby. Brother, you can pull him back into history. Today, you can have your desire. Hallelujah. 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 And then I said there was Joshua. He came to Jordan in time of flooding. But Joshua said, Lord, how do we cross over? He says, but Joshua said, but Lord, you, I was there when you opened the Red Sea. Hey. And he said, but God, if you can do it there, I saw it. Yeah, we got another situation. I'm pulling you from there into here, into my situation. And, he, oh, and she opened what? He spoke and he says, the priest will go before. And he, the Jordan opened. Amen. What was the God of history pulled into present tense? And I say tonight, we have a message. This might seem like history. But you can pull that same God tonight. Pull him out of the pages of the spoken word. Pull him out of the pages of the Bible into your situation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. My. So this God we serve, I like what they said. The message is alive. And we have the answer to the devil's question. Brother, it's time enough is enough. Somebody must take a stand. Young people, you got to tell him enough is enough. No more you had me 2019, but 2020, it's going to be different. Uh, this is my year. This is my year of victory. I had enough of your troubles. Shake it off tonight, brother. Get to the right position. As our brother said, look at the sculpture from the right side. You got to get to the right place. God has a way of approach. And when you hit that spot, no demon can stop you, brother. There's no devil can stand in your way. God must answer. Amen. Hallelujah. God has got to answer. My. Then, the same God of Israel. And then, I, I, uh, some things I found of Brubrenum. Now, Pastor Juma, you won't believe Ask Luke what I told him, what I'm going to preach tonight. That we each one have an angel. Can you believe it? Look how God is smart, man. This God, I tell you. I got the whole message here. So when he was going to preach, and I was going to show you that we each one walking with our own angel. The pastor is the angel behind the pulpit. Every one of us, when we walk, and he says, my, Oh my God, where you walk, angels walk. He says, they don't only come, they camp around you. You think you're alone in your... You're not alone, brother. Angel, that's what I was going to preach tonight. And God sends our pastor here to come and preach it. I had the one of Jacob laid on a rock. Angels ascending. So they were here. They didn't come down. He says ascending. Does that mean they were here? They did, oh, he didn't say this. He said first ascending. Taking up your praise. Taking up your request. And then they come right back. Hey, tonight, man, I believe they're here. Don't sit back. Don't hold back. Come on. This could be your night. Right at the closing hours of 2019. God can answer your prayer. God can give you what you desire. God can fill you with the Holy Ghost. God can deliver you. Hallelujah. Amen, young people. Come on. The 2020 could be your year. My man, God is smart. How could he preach the same thing I was going to preach tonight? That we each one have an angel. Yo, that's what the Bible says. Don't stumble one of your, my children. It's better that the millstone be hung on your neck and cast in the sea. Because their angels behold the father's face. Your angels go before the father and behold his face on your behalf. So don't start, let the Christian stumble, man. Come on. Oh. Hallelujah. My God bless you, man, brother. How can God be so smart? Ask Luke what I told him. Okay, you may be seated. Just a few more history quickly there. 
Then uh, we were speaking. It's uh, it's uh, one of the deacons came to Brother Ram. There was a communion night, and they used the cups, you know, the small ones. And then uh, the prayer, the line was still full. One of the deacons came. Now brother, they say Brother Ram always stood right at the communion table. So everyone that came past, he says, like, for you to take communion, the prophet's standing there. You're naked before you. But he came and he whispered his ears, uh, Brudave, and he said, listen, the, the communion wine is finished and there's still so many people in the line. Now watch, Brother Ben. He now went back to history, so but Jesus took six cups, six water pots. He said, fill them with water. And then he said, pour it out, it was wine. Brother Ben told the deacon, don't worry, we, I'm going to pray. And the deacon said, he stood with his eyes open and he watched the cups. He has the prophet praying. He said, Lord, fill these cups with wine. The deacon looks and as the, he, Brother says, fill them with wine. Yeah, the wine start comes in, come up in the cups. What did Brother Ben do? He pulled a God from history into present tense. Hey, brother, God is real, man. This message works. This message is alive. This message will work in your life. If it worked in the prophet's life, as our precious pastor said, it will work in your life. And this next thing, here with the glasses full, there was enough wine for everyone. But remember, from nothing, Jesus took water. speak of this message being powerful he spoke of the squirrels Adam took trees that was there spoke to them water that was there Jesus took bread and fish that was there but in this day when he said let there be a squirrel there was nothing brother come on the message is alive speak to your situation speak to what has got you bound tonight I believe it can happen man I believe the faith bank is high My, then quickly another one. Uh, this is uh, Brother Jeff Je uh, Charles Jenkins speaking about Rob Roy Robertson spoke to him. He said, Brother Branham, we bought a piece of land. We worked so hard. We don't have water on it. But now we're going to drill a ball. He says, but this water is so bitter, we can't use it. We've invested it. It's now almost become a useless piece of land. Useless house. We can't drink this water. It's bitter. And Brother Branham, watch now. Goes back to history. When Israel came to Mara. And the waters was bitter. Hey, come on, man. Woo, hallelujah. I, I feel something's happening tonight. He thinks back to the waters of Mara. He says, he says Brother, Brother Robson, you stay on the phone. He says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to speak to the water. Now Moses, when he came here to get a special branch, and then he chucked it in the water, and for a little while it was there, and it sweetened the water. Brother Bam says, Brother Robson, you hold that phone. And he says, water be sweet. Brother Robson says, when he went back, the water was sweet. They still using it up till today. Listen, brother. Brother Benham didn't need a branch. The branch was in him. And all he had to do was speak it. The branch is in you. You got a bitter situation. Speak to it. Speak to it. Give it water. Come on. Sweeten my situation. Sweeten this thing that's bothering me. Lord, I can't help anymore. Let the branch sweeten the water. Who's the branch? It is Jesus Christ. The root and offspring of David. The branch. My, come on, man. One more. One more. Bro, uh, you may be serious. Problem says, uh, Eli Perry, you can read it. I got it all here in quotes. But his name is Eli, E-L-I-J, Perry. You can read it. Just punch it in. It will come up. He says, what happened? He had worked, I think, in a mine or something. And it contaminated his lungs. Then his lungs, and he just bled. His lungs collapsed and the man was bleeding all over. 
He says they're in the room and there's a, his wife and a few sisters. Then he says they pulled a sheet over him. And he says he begins to walk out. But as he walks out. As he walks out. As he walks out. Brother Juma, you sit there. He says, but when he's walking out, he says, but something takes him on the shoulder. And he turns around. There's no one there. So he thinks nothing of it. The man is dead. They pull the sheep. And as he goes again, second time, a hand on his shoulder. He looks. There's no one. You know what, what happened? Remember, Elijah laid on that baby. And he put his nose to his nose, his lips to his lips, his head to his head. And he laid on him. And what happened? He came back to life. Brother Bema says, right after that, right after that, I don't know what happened. I found myself leaning on Eli Perry. And he says, before you know, my lips was on his lips. My nose was on his nose. I was all bloody because of the sheep. He says, but you know what? I felt the hand come over my ear. And when I looked, he was alive again. That was the God of history. He saw that Elijah did that. Yeah, our Elijah in this day, he did the same thing. And tonight, the God that we serve is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whatever your request is he can meet with you tonight brother don't you do you believe that you believe whatever your desire is you believe as we're gonna cross over i'm putting it before him i'm leaving the things that's negative the things that almost destroyed me i'm leaving it behind and when you mean leave you leave it you leave it you don't go and pick it up you leave it Satan wants to destroy you. You heard our brother said. He wants to upset you. But there's a God greater than what he is. Before and you were before Satan was. You were. Where were you brother? In the mind of God. Already you were perfect. Already you were chosen. He chose you with your mistakes. He chose you with your faults. And Satan cannot alter that. Woo, hallelujah. Man, my mind is blown, Brother James. Come and speak on the angels. That's the message I had for tonight. You'll be surprised. Moses, I'm sending you. But Lord, how can I go? I'm sending my angel before you. Moses didn't go alone. What did you think overcame Egypt? It was the angel. You're going to find out you're not even you overcoming. It's the angel in you overcoming. There's overcoming power. There's victory. There's power. Woo, hallelujah. Just one quote here quickly, and I'll read that, our famous quote. It's about just 10 to now. He says here, yeah, but what we need tonight is a great big bundle of love of God poured out in our hearts. All differences washed away. Bury it with the old year. Bury it. Listen to what I'm saying. He's saying, bury it. What we need tonight is a great, and this is a New Year's comment. You're going to hear here. But what we need tonight is a great big bundle of love of God pour out in our heart. All differences wash away. Bury it with the old year. Please, 2019, there's 10 minutes left. Bury it with the old year. Something that's, that must die, you bury it. So tonight, say, Lord, I'm burying it. I'm not going to dig it up next year. No matter what the devil chucks before me. No matter how he tries to bring those cravings. Uh, no matter what he wants to show me. I'm leaving it buried. Woo! Don't dig up old dead bones, man. Don't dig up something that's dead. So you better start digging, man. Say, Lord, I'm burying it tonight. Bury it with the old year as it passes out. Let it go. Let's start a new life, a new beginning. If you are already born into the kingdom of God, you already got the Holy Spirit in you. The only thing you have to do is cut loose from these things of the world that's holding you down. So you already have the Holy Spirit. That's the overcomer. That's the enforcer. So all you got to do is use that and say, tonight I'm cutting loose that temper. 
that that, that lust, that that, that pornography, uh, that alcohol, that cigarettes, cut loose. You already got the Holy Ghost. The enforcer is already in you. <coughs> cut loose from all those things that's holding you down. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth so easily beset us that we might run with patience the life, the race that's set before us. Hebrews 12. Lay aside the weight. Lay it aside. It's not how long you can do. You're going to get so tired. You're going to want to give up. But lay it aside. Bury it. And you're going to find out you got the victory. Problem is not how near we can go, how long we can do. It's how quicker we can get over it. And you're going to find out you have so much victory. So are you prepared for that? Oh my goodness. Don't you love the Lord? My, let's just give the Lord a hand of praise. We appreciate our precious pastor. Let's just salute him again. How the Holy Spirit uses him tonight in such a mighty way. He says, yeah, it's just about three minutes until the time that the whistles are going to blow. Be blown. And it will be midnight. Then as we leave this building to go to our different places and our homes to meet outside and to meet the world. Let's not go as we have in former times. So he's giving us a, a warning here. Don't go as in former times like, I know who I am. No, you don't know who you are. You don't know what's waiting there. So don't go out like you went out in former times. Let's go in the power. Yes. Hey, Brother George, of the resurrection. Let's go in the name of Jesus. Christ with a banner lifted high. And with faith in his word. To handle a two-edged sword with a shield and the full armor of God on to meet the enemy because he's getting stronger. And that is true. Look what he's doing. Look what he's doing to the world. But if he's getting stronger, then the church must be getting stronger. If all hell is here, all heaven is here. So I'm not going to focus on all hell. I'm going to focus on all heaven. I don't care how strong he gets. I want to see how strong the church is getting. So I focus on the church being stronger. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says the enemy comes to the front. Raise up a standard against him. If we have come to the end of these things. And the mysteries. That's the mysteries. And God has completed with us. So in other words by this time. 62 he knew the mysteries was finished. It was now just a seal to reveal. Yo. He says, to meet a, a worse force. He says, that will rapture the church. The strength. He says, uh, uh, more, he says, God is completed with us. And we are looking for more strength. A rapturing strength. To meet a worse force that will rapture the church and take it into glory. We must have it. Let's meet 63. I say, let's meet 2020. With a challenge. I'm just ready with a challenge. Well, stand to your feet and show him I'm ready, man. I got a two-edged sword. Let's meet the challenge like we are servants of the living God. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego of old. We will not bow to the devils of this world. Take back the thing that, that what we've talked about. Let's press the battle. Take back what the enemy took from you. That's what our pastor said. Take it back, brother. Hallelujah. You are the son. The son is more authority than the angel. You know you have more authority than Gabriel. Standing before the throne. Your prayer. Your need. Your requirement tonight. You have more authority than that angel that's standing there. Because you're a son of God. Woo, hallelujah. Speak your situation. We'll not bow to the devils of this world. Let's press the battle. I feel tonight as we're listening for the whistles. Hallelujah. Something like David, that dreadful hot night when he laid out there under the mulberry bushes and the enemy was rousing. What an hour it must have been for David. What a time for him laying there. He didn't know how to move. He didn't know what, which way to go because he knew he was outnumbered. But all at once, 
he heard the sound of the wind going through the top of the bushes. He knew God went before him. And then he went to the battle. I feel something like that tonight. After last night's message. I'm laying in the darkest hour that I've ever faced in my life. I feel like a Zion in the temple. After seeing those angels. He's speaking of those seven angels that came. He says, after seeing those, I'm a man of unclean lips. And dwelling among unclean people with unclean lips. But listen. I've got to meet it some way. If the only thing I'm waiting to hear is the rushing through the mulberry bushes, to, I go to meet the enemy, whatever it is, God help us to do it. So you don't shirk. You be like David. He ran to Goliath. Run to your challenge. Don't go, maybe I'll make it. Like he said, hope so. Hope don't have hope. It's not a wish show. Run to the challenge. Run to your situation and say, I'm going to overcome it. And now I think it's one more minute. And that's exactly right. One more minute as we stand to our feet. Now, each one of us, the contest is on. Each one of you, Paul said, forgetting those things that didn't pass, all of our mistakes of last year, I press towards the mark of the high calling. And all the mistakes that I've made in the, uh, all these years, forgive me of them. God, forgive me, church. Church, forgive me in the ministry. I fail with it. I feel, God, I forgive me for it. Church, forgive me for my mistakes. And I'll press towards the mark of the high calling. Christ, whatever tomorrow holds. I don't know, but I know who holds 2020. So I'm going to put a challenge out. You want to come to the altar and kneel here? Those who really feel you say, Lord, I want to cross over. You can come to the altar as we kneel. Young people, don't miss this opportunity. Look, let them just move right more forward so there's more space. Come, sister. Come, mother. Children needs prayer. Someone not here. Just pray for them. The musicians. Oh, you're also kneeling. That's fine. Isn't that beautiful? My. The Holy Spirit here. My. Oh, what a night. Oh God, we're looking for that power, that Holy Spirit to press through, Lord. Every heart, every desire, every prayer, every request. And don't be afraid to speak it. I don't care how difficult it seems. I don't care if it didn't happen. It can happen. All our brother said, you need to have faith and work according to God's laws. He says, let us raise our hands to God now and let us pray in our own way. So you've got to pray in your own way. God want to hear from your mouth. So you pray. I'll just finish the prayer. As we make our confessions and ask God to help us through the next coming year. Heavenly Father, as we stand here, as many thoughts is dying out in our hearts and all of the mistakes of last year. And as we approach in the death of, we say, 2019 and the birth of 2020. Oh God, may we be one step higher up the ladder until we can see Jesus and his program. May everyone here, Lord, in prayer. While the old year is dying and the new birth of the new year is coming in. May the old man sin and unbelief die out in our hearts. And the new birth come in with 2020 like a rushing mighty wind. That might fill our beings and make us new creatures in Christ. Make us fit servants. Forgive our past. Bless our future. Guide us, O oh God, with thy mighty hand, Jehovah. Bless these ministers here. Bless all the laity and the visitors. Be thou with us, O oh Lord. We are your servants and we give ourselves wholly to you for 2020. That the power of your spirit might have more preeminences in our life and in our being. Help us, O oh God. Forgive us. Help us, we pray. Raise up mighty men. Raise up mighty warriors of the faith. Open this year, Lord, the hidden manner, that rock beneath the rock, that we might see the program of God. Cap off the pyramids of our life. Lord, put the capstone, Christ Jesus, upon each one and every one of us. May his great, magnificent, holy blessings be upon us all. May the fire of the Holy Ghost come upon us. May the power of the resurrection the manifested God. How we thank you tonight. We are yours. We give ourselves fully to you, Lord. As I go yonder, not knowing where and how and what will I do. I'm trusting you, almighty God, that you'll guide me, your unprofitable servant, that I might be used to your honor and your glory. 
of the almighty granted father receive our praise bless our efforts heal the sick lord and afflicted both spiritually and physically and make us thy servants we are the clay you are the potter mold us each one in your own way that we might fit together hallelujah with christ jesus as a member of his body for we ask it in jesus name and for his sake and for the gospel's sake amen and amen you keep praying in the old way almighty god as a church we bow down before you and we kneel down and we pray and we speak in your word almighty god may the angels of god may the dying of 2019 lord and the birth of 2020 Lord, we're on our knees. We, we call in upon your name. We, we pray and we speak into you our needs. Lord God, you are the same yesterday, today and forever. The same God that was William with William Branham is the same God that's with the bride tonight. The same angel that was with him is with us tonight, Lord. And each one is speaking their need. Each one is calling out before you. Forgive us our sins. Forgive us our failures. Forgive us where we let you down forgive us where we disappointed you but father we know you are able to restore everything the enemy took from us he took our health he took our joy he tried to take our marriage he tried to break down families he tried every my father you said i will restore and we confess we failed we confess our wrongs and we say god once more we feel like samson just once more god there's a possibility tonight that you can restore our lives there's a possibility you can bring peace in the valley there's a possibility lord you can deliver someone we know there's a possibility once more lord as 2020 has been ushered in once more lord once more send down your power upon each life the young people we pray fill them with the holy ghost they're not going to make it without the holy ghost so we pray the holy ghost touch them fill them seal them lord seal the ministers seal me lord give me a refilling all our ministers the deacons the trustees the elders the laity the musicians the chorus leaders all the sound men the video men all the way from the pulpit to the janitor room may the power of God flow Lord right through father and may there be a brand new season a new season start Lord when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of God raises a standard raise it in every life tonight Lord raise that standard may the Holy Spirit come upon our visitors that came tonight may they give their lives to Christ may they surrender and know this is the only way out Lord touch our children touch our babies lord fill them with the holy spirit lord and if we're doing any wrong cut us loose tonight any young person still busy with things they shouldn't be busy with worldly music that pornography that lust lord oh that alcohol that that that, that cigarettes lord that woman whatever it is may you cut everyone loose tonight lord that's bound may the house of hell give way to the name of jesus and every prison house be open up and people will walk out free tonight lord delivered like our pastor quoted that angel went to where peter was in prison woke him up god open up the prison gates and peter walked out lord tonight we know those angels are here each one's angel is here lord that the offering the process is right next to us to give us a charge like a charge going into a battery to encourage us to hold on to press to persevere may that holy spirit just charge us lord father may the young girls lord may they look after themselves may they stay clean may they stay pure lord may the holy spirit keep them from these demons of the world that's just out to destroy and out to use them father may they know there's a holy god that's looking down and lord that he can touch their lives and fill them and they don't have to partake of the things of the world christ can be there hallelujah 
complete joy complete satisfaction we do not need those things anymore lord may they know it may the holy spirit impress it there's those that are sick lord i'm thinking of my wife tonight brother sam lord different ones that's not well may the holy spirit heal them tonight may the holy spirit go there and touch those bodies lord everyone else I, that i did not mention but the holy spirit knows they sick May you touch them. You said, Lord, even this journey, it's not only natural sickness, but spiritual sickness. Lord, that's, that's sometimes even worse than natural sickness. May the spiritual sickness be healed in this church of God. And may 2020 be a year of victory, Father. Oh, keep praying, friends. Young people, keep praying. Parents keep praying. Maybe there's someone that's not here in this meeting. Pray for them. Send the Holy Ghost after them. Call their name. Speak the word by faith. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm, I'm not using lip service tonight, but I'm speaking by faith. If your life is not changed, ask him to forgive you. He'll wash you and make you pure as a lily. I don't care what you did. Oh God, will go to the lowest and he'll change and he'll make you brand new. He'll forgive you. He'll wash you in his blood tonight. But you, you gotta, you got to say, Father, I accept your sacrifice of Calvary. I accept what you did. And tonight, Lord, as we heard your word go out, hallelujah. How that when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we become a twofold being. One that's subject to the things of the earth. But there's another part that the devil cannot touch. Hallelujah. That's the soul inside. That's the one that the Holy Spirit. That angels visit and brings messages to you. That same angels that we were speaking about. Is here tonight to bring you a message. To say you can make it. Hallelujah. Don't give up. You can make it tonight. That's what your angel is telling you tonight. You can make it. Oh God, we do not want to go before in our own strength. We failed, Lord. But we want to go in the power of the resurrected Christ. Tell it to him tonight. Speak to him, please. Say, God, this, is, this new year is brand new. It's just about 10 minutes old. But Father, I believe the presence of God can take my weekend. I'm placing my weekend into your mighty hand. And I pray that you will lead me. Make me obedient to the spirit of God. Make me obedient to your word. Make me obedient to the message Lord. Hallelujah. It's got to work. Don't say it can't work. It must work. If it did for someone else. It can work for you tonight. Pull the God of history into your situation. He's still alive tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, I want to be at the right place to look at that statue. That's why many people can't see the statue of a perfect man. They're looking at it from a wrong angle. But when you get to the right place, you're going to find out when you look at that statue of a perfect man, you're going to see it's nothing else but Jesus. Oh, God, help me tonight. Oh, here I help us tonight. Give us kracht here. Give us kracht, Father. Versterk ons. Onderneem vir ons Heere. Tree in vir ons Heere Jesus. Ons het nie die rechte woorde, maar jy, Heere, die Heilige Geest, kan hy woorde by mekaar sit, en dit voor die Vader bring, en, en, en ons teenwoordig, en sê Heere, hoor hulle gebed, hoor, hoe, hoe roep hulle uit Heere, Heere, antwoord vanavond, Heere, raak aan vanavond Heere, versterk hulle vanavond Heere, breek sattings bande vanavond Heere, Mag die heilige geest vanavond elke ziel aanraak. Elke moeder, elke vader, elke jongman, elke jong dochter, elke kind, elke baba. Halleluja. Even you young man that's not baptized, give your life to Christ. Get baptized. Time is running out. Young girl, give your life to Christ and get baptized. Get saved. Say, Lord, I'm making this year, Lord, a, a, a year that I can serve you, Lord. I found out this message is real. Oh, it's more real than what you realize. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, I want to know you in the power of your resurrection tonight. 
I got a husband, I got a wife, I got children out there, I got uh, babies, I got my sister, my brother, I got brothers that's not saved, Lord, that's backslidden, that's in the world. You know where you come short. Tell the Lord, I come short, Lord. I come short here. Yeah. Speak to him and watch him make a way for you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. What a presence. Oh, hallelujah. I know the Lord will make way for Hallelujah, Jesus. My children, Lord, my children tonight. Hallelujah. Everyone that almost came, be, be, be like that woman our brother spoke in Luke 18. That unrighteous judge, she didn't stop. She came again, kept knocking. Here we are back. We were knocking in 2019. Here's the 2020. And we're still knocking. He's going to answer. He says, now if an unrighteous judge can do that, how much will our heavenly father give us the baptism of the Holy Spirit? So Lord, I'm knocking tonight. I come again. And I know you're going to make your way for me, God. I know I speak that word. I take you at your word, Lord. Because I know my God is more than able. If you're sick, lay your hands. Lay your hands wherever you are sick, whatever it is. Lay your hands on yourself. Say, God, I lay my hands on that sick spot. I lay my hands on my body, Lord. I don't know if it's headaches, if it's stomach, if it's a back, whatever it is. God, I'm laying my hands and I claim my healing tonight. Lord, may your healing power flow through this body, flow through this church, flow through every person tonight, Lord. And may you heal, may you answer, God. Oh, God. God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, His presence is here. 2020 has just begun. It's 15 minutes old. Can you believe it? 2020 is only 15 minutes old, Lord. And I feel your presence. I feel your power. I know I'll be healed, Lord. I know the angel of God will visit my home. Hallelujah. He'll visit my neighborhood. He'll visit and you'll find out things will change. Hallelujah. You can't go the same. You can't. Bury it tonight. You heard what the process is. Bury it. Bury it. Dig that hole so deep and bury it tonight. Cover it up. Cover it up with the blood of Jesus so you cannot take it out again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Savior. Savior, yeah, my humble cry. Once the night thou art called, calling to not pass. Ah uh -huh. 